know. All that, uh, I was here when it happened, so. Okay. Well, I wasn't here. I live in the house okay. next door. What's your name? I'm Chris Carter. Oh, okay. You okay. Know. I know you. I just didn't really recognize you with your sunglasses. That's right. Um, no, two young men were in a red pickup, and they came through the uh, stop sign and lost control of their truck. And as you can see, they just uh, hit the mailbox and the sign, and, and uh, the truck wound up on its side against the, the building right there. I can't believe it got the stained glass. Well, that's not extremely old stained glass. It can all be redone, replaced. Now, I don't understand how the brick got so far down the street. It's all I can Well, when they hit that sign right there, mm -hmm. it just exploded brick in that direction. And that's what, you know, that's what you see on the Oh, roof right I there. didn't even see that uh, on the roof. Yeah, there, it, some of it went over. Uh, it's cracked uh, everywhere. So most of this brick right here is not from that. A lot of the brick that you see on the other side and, and right around there is from the sign right there. How bad were they injured? They were amazingly uh, in good condition. They both crawled out of the cab from the back window, and uh, I wasn't sure that that was going to be the case. My son and I got in the truck and just came from the driveway right there, and with, you know, to put flashers on uh, immediately after it happened. I mean, we were we were in the front of the house and we heard it. I bet it sounded like a sonic boom. It did. It sounded like <clears throat> a, it sounded like a, a transformer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there was no fire uh, or anything like that. And, uh, I was concerned, so I t told my son to stay in the truck. But when I got out uh, and approached the vehicle, there was somebody crawling out of the back window. I did, it was amazing that he could even do it. Um, and then uh, after I called 911, while I was on the phone with uh, dispatch, the other uh, boy started crawling out the back window too. Uh, and, I, and that was the driver. He was complaining that um, his arm was hurt, hurting real bad. Uh, they had a lot of scrapes and you know sc scratches and stuff like that. But they could both walk and, and sit down and get up. Amazing. So they were they were very fortunate. Were they from here? Do you know? I believe that uh, uh, the passenger. Uh, was from Mendenhall. Uh, the driver, I think, was from somewhere around Braxton, Florence area. Uh, nobody that we know. Nobody that we know. So they probably wasn't familiar with that stop sign there? I, I don't know uh, if they were or not. Uh, you know, being from, not being from this immediate area, uh, I, would, I would think that they weren't as familiar with it. Wait. Is that part of the... What's that stuff up there? The house, yeah. How, what is this stuff? Part, that's the grill, the cooling, coolant jugs, and just several motor supports and mounts and air filters. What is the estimated speed they think this was hit with? What would you... I mean, that to bust a sign like that. I would say... Well, I, you know, I would, I would, I would probably defer to... Uh, a deputy or even a, a state patrol officer. Who I believe I'll defer to Hale. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say 50, 60. When, when they get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, it might have slowed down after they, because this probably took a big one. Well, it slowed them down a bunch. Yes, it's all. Except for one area. So yeah, that's right. It had to go it airborne. Started, it started two tracks, and then you've got multiple skids right here, so it was sideways airborne from this point on. And it didn't touch the ground on the other side of the sign until the bottom of the field. Yeah, I see that. So it basically just flew through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were very fortunate. Well, you've got to be right about there. We're glad they're okay. Yes. We were. You know, we were able to, I was able to meet the parents of, 
of uh, the, the passenger mm -hmm. uh, because they're from Mendenhall and, and they got here not too long after us. We were able to pray with them and, and, and make sure you know the son was coherent and everything. Every he was very coherent. His blood pressure was back down to a normal range and everything. So it's miraculous. Good. Well, Chris, I guess y'all start to clean up with more. Well, we're going to let the insurance adjuster get here, yeah. and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask the the church to make our Wednesday night event about cleaning up and and also doing something to the effect to uh, reach out to the guys who were in the accident and, and to say that's not about the building or the bricks or anything like that. We're just glad they're okay. I believe they were 19 or 20. <laughs> they, I, I believe they were 19 and 20 years old. The driver, I believe, was 20 years old. If anyone is interested in helping with the cleanup Wednesday night, what time do you meet? Um, we meet at, uh, technically our prayer meeting begins at 6.15 or mm -hmm. 6.30. Mm -hmm. uh, our youth program begins at 6.15. Um, I imagine that, that uh, we'll start... If, if we do that event, which I'm, I'm going to call for, we'll start at 6 o'clock. Okay. If not, you know, there may be some... Our, our nursery uh, kids begin to get here earlier than 6. Mm -hmm. uh, but 6 o'clock, a lot of people are already here and, and getting ready to start RAs and GAs and such as that. And uh, so we, we will probably uh, get the word out to, to meet here at 6 and to do that. And uh, we'll we'll plan to have a, a short prayer service for uh, the the people who were in the truck, mm -hmm. and then begin the cleanup. Mm -hmm.